Nearly 200,000 union nurses are pushing for a Bernie Sanders nomination from the Democratic Party. They plan to send 150 of their members to the Democratic National Convention in July and look to pick a fight. Sanders spoke in front of the National Nurses United on Tuesday and laid his health care goals out, the reason for the union's robust support. So we've got a dysfunctional system, and we are going to change that system. That is what the American people want. We are going to take on the private insurance companies. We are going to take on the drug companies. The function of health care in a democratic, civilized society is to provide quality care to all of our people in a cost-effective way, not to make billions of dollars in profits for the drug companies or the insurance companies. The executive director of the Massachusetts Nurses Association, an affiliate of National Nurses United and Massachusetts Sanders delegate at large, Julie Pinkham, joins me now. Julie, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. What do you want to see come out of Bernie Sanders' policies? We know that the entire union wants Bernie Sanders as the nominee. What specific policies do you want to see that will be so positive for nurses? In particular, Medicare for All, I think it's long overdue. Most in the American public is so on board with expanding now Medicare, not just for over 65, but for everybody in the country. As a country, we're supposed to be a leadership uh, democracy, and I think we're so far behind every other industrialized country in the world that I don't understand at this point what is taking so long. We're watching every day as people don't get adequate care, and it's time for so that what, to what's change. So wrong, what's wrong with Hillary Clinton's proposals? I mean, she says she wants to build on Obamacare. Yeah, but it's incrementalism again, and I think the reality is while there have been some benefits to those changes, you know, you can't keep taking baby steps here. We have to address the problem. We have a very effective uh, system right now in terms of Medicare. It's not like we don't know what we can do. We know we can do it. So we take an efficient system of Medicare and we expand it to everybody, and that's how I think we get the efficiencies and we t and stop taking money that is essentially going into bill collection and administration and start putting it into care of people who desperately need it. But Julie, even on the Democratic side, it's Dega McDowell. One of the reasons that Medicare for All hasn't moved forward is because Medicare as it exists today for older Americans is going to run out of money in it's a little more than a decade. I think it's about 12 or 13 years based on the trustees report. So we haven't figured out a way to keep the cost down in regular Medicare and fix that first before, it, if you're listening to a Democrat, before moving on to something that is far greater and far more expensive. Well, but the reality is not looking at Medicare and expanding it and instead looking at the private sector. If we look at the private sector, what we're doing, it's worse than the system of Medicare as far as trying to deal with the cost. In the private sector, we're actually increasing profit margins of private companies while not improving the quality of care or access for anyone. So we haven't been able to put that you know, genie back in the bottle either as far as cost. So suggesting that, well, we have to continue on a path that's ineffective and not delivering care because we can't address the problem of Medicare isn't a solution either. And I think if you ask the public, directly, which would you prefer to work on? Resolving the issues with Medicare and adequate funding so that everybody can have equal access? The public's issues are essentially, they want to be able to go to the, the institutions and the providers that they want to, to see, and they want to be able to get but access one, anywhere. But one is an issue That can't of, happen under this system. But one is an issue, if, when you talk about Medicare, that is a cost borne by all taxpayers, and you potentially look at a country that goes bankrupt, and, then, and you're asking the government to to make meta personal medical decisions for you. Ultimately, the, the government's going to have to decide who gets care and how long they get care in order to control the cost. That's what people fear possibly the most. Well, as the people I talk to every day, if you ask them which would they prefer, Medicare or the current system they have, hands down it's Medicare. Most people right now, they're not getting the care that they deserve. They often go into, it's a sort of this false dichotomy that you have all this access. What the reality is, if you have lots of money, you have lots of access and great health care. If you don't, you don't. So Obamacare so, I mean, was a lie then. I mean, the nurses see it on the front line. So Obama well, I don't think it was a lie. I certainly think there were some benefits to it, pre-existing illness, elimination of those issues. All very good. But when you talk to nurses who are on the front lines and they're looking, they're like canaries in the mine when you come into the healthcare system. You see the, 
the implications of all sorts of policies. And right now, there's a lot of people that aren't accessing uh, the health care system because they can't pay the co-pays or it's a labyrinth. You know, you can't go to this particular physician until you go, go through that particular physician. You can only go to this particular institution. You can't go. So it's like water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. Right. So, so just, just to be clear, then you do think that the government should be making health care decisions for you? Well, I certainly think in Medicare, there are government decisions that are made, yes. Yeah. I think so you, you right now, yes. private sector is making them. Do we think that it's better for corporations to make your decisions? I don't think that's better. No, I think At it's better the for the individual the to people. make the decisions. The individual should be making the decision, no? I would say under Medicare, the individuals have more choice. I get to choose what physicians I get to go to. I get to choose what institutions I get to. Right now, under the private sector system, that doesn't happen. Uh, real quick, Julie, you say you're going to have a, you want to see a showdown at the, De uh, the Democratic Convention. What does that mean? What are you guys going to do? Well, I think we'll be on the outside and we'll be on the inside. I'm an at-large delegate, so I'll be on the inside of the building, which I'm really looking forward to. But I think there's also going to be nurses on the outside of the building raising the issues such as Medicare for All, raising environmental issues, the education issues, all the types of things that the values of nurses have been actually putting on a platform for quite some time so now. So, like protesting? I mean, you, you being on the inside, what can you do on the inside? Well, I certainly want to talk to fellow colleagues about the superdelegate issue. I mean, having people sort of decide pro forma before we even get there who's mm -hmm. going to be the best nominee is a mistake. So I want to talk to those people. I want to actually have a part of a debate about what the platform should be going forward. And I think the folks on the outside want to raise the public awareness about how important these issues are. Yeah. Nurses have always been able to do that in a very effective and peaceful way. And, and you're a delegate. You should, have that. You, should, you should have that choice. Julie, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Julie, thank, thank you for joining us there. We'll be watching you at the uh, Democratic uh, Convention.